response. Yes, hello. Uh, welcome to my talk. I'm here as a uh, private entity and hobbyist. I'm not here for a company, but at least now my project got a logo, so which you can see on the right side. So I have a quick overview of the topics. I did previous talks at EuroPythons um, two and three years ago. And these were longer talks. This time I was uh, going for a faster talk. I have some actual good news and I have some problems to share with you. So I'm going to talk about who I am. Uh, my name is Kai Hein. I'm a professional from the uh, ATC industry and uh, I do this as my uh, hobby. It's my spare time effort. And my spare time effort, uh, the title of the talk kind of disclosed it already, is uh, the Python compiler. I got a bit preposterous about this, but uh, basically, uh, if you see the goals, um, that makes sense. Show you what it takes, it takes basically nothing. We are going to compile a simple program and a full bone uh, program material, but uh, there's not going to be a lot of time to look at this, so uh, that's going to be fast. I'm going to present you with my goals, and uh, uh, the plan how we get there. The last point on the slide, join me is the most important because this project is really high potential and it's limited by the amount of contributors. So far I am mostly on my own. I have a few people who help me and uh, sustain parts of the project, but this is not enough. So it's going uh, slower than it could be, although if, as you will see, it's pretty, um, it's progressing pretty well. Then I will have a look at uh, some details of Nutka. Nutka, as you know, Python is a very dynamic and um, complex language, and uh, I have uh, taken steps to uh, reduce that problem. And there's some common complaints here. Uh, everybody knows that Python is highly dynamic. How could a compiler even work? Then we look at optimizations. It's what we have so far, that list got longer recently. And um, actually, I'm demoing now here, and I, uh, when I wrote the title of the talk, this didn't work, and it didn't work until maybe last week, the inlining of function calls, which is a, um, I see this as a breakthrough um, to the compiler, technically. Practically, it's probably not. But technically, it's very um, good achievement, and what else there is going to come. So, uh, maybe let me start with a name. It's named after my wife, Anna, and like it was uh, suggested uh, um, seconds ago, I could have named it like this. I named it after her in Russian, she's Russian, and in Russian, um, she's called Anyutka, and uh, short form Nyutka. Uh, which is tricky because it's pronounced differently than it is written. So, but that is your name. And uh, I started it with, uh, after mingling with uh, other projects, PyPy and Cyton, um, to be a fully compatible compiler that doesn't have to make any compromises and doesn't have to invent a new language and so on. I was thinking out of the box, so, uh, most people see Python as a very powerful tool for some part of the language landscape, but not all. And I wanted to take it um, to um, also where performance critical stuff happens. So, sorry. Um, uh, I don't see any time pressure, so I do this the right way. And the right way means that um, uh, I can do this so it carries all uh, all the weight of Python all the time. It's licensed very liberally and you can use it with everything. So it's uh, free software of the uh, most uh, free kind. Uh, most uh, major milestones are now achieved. It's basically working if you want, all you want is an accelerator. Um, it's going to work on all the operating systems. Uh, Android and iOS need some work, but uh, in theory they should work. And I know that some people have done some things, but um, 
it's still future work. Obviously, the mobile space and Python uh, could see some help, and maybe Nutka can provide that. So what it does it use? It uses uh, older uh, Python versions and newer ones alike, even the latest uh, 3.5 beta. Uh, anticipating a question from you, uh, I added support for that. So it passes the C Python 3.4 test suite, uh, running a, a compiled code. Uh, and it takes a C++ compiler. I will cover that issue more on later slides. And it takes your Python code and that is it. So it's really just a C, comp uh, C++ compiler and Nutka and you can compile. So having a new language that is separate from Python means I lose all the things I like. I put them all on the slides here and I'm trying to be a bit fast about the presentation but you know there's lots of things that you are used to and if it's not Python but for example uh, something else um, then we just lose it so I put a kind of stop sign uh, below there. So very important to me is if we have a fast Python it should be a Python. Much like PyPy um, tries to be one or Jiten tries to be uh, a Java dialect I can switch back and forth so the thing I'm trying to do is if you start using Nutka, you are not going to have a price attached. It doesn't mean that your project is uh, bound to using it. That means if you encounter a bug in Nutka and it stops working, you can just use something else instead. So my ideas here for performance, and these are very old ideas, I've not done anything actually in this direction yet, and I know that Guido is running around and presenting um, ideas for type hints. And everybody asks me, will I support them? And the answer is yes. Although technically I would like something that also works during the runtime of Python. So in his proposal, it's just something that Python very exquisitely ignores and doesn't use. And I don't like that at all. I want it to be code that actually improves the quality and makes these actual checks. And then the compiler just gets to benefit from the uh, knowledge extracted from such checks. So the first goal, and one which I met um, a couple of years ago, was feature parity with CPython. It's compatible with all the language constructs and it's also compatible with the runtime. So Qt, LXML, whatever extension objects there are, uh, you can use them. Uh, the compatibility that I have achieved and that I have increased since, it's amazingly high. Basically, my first attempt at Nutka was to make a demonstration that something like a Python compiler actually can fit into things without having a price. And this is now what I consider a true statement. So from there on, um, well, uh, on to the next thing. Some of these projects I mentioned need patches, so PyQt, PySide, and so on. Sometimes they uh, make too tight check on what is a function. So I have a compiled function type and they were not tolerant about this uh, without patches. So the next thing is to generate efficient code from that. As you will kind of see of a PyStone benchmark, I achieved a number, um, a two and a half fold uh, speed up. So this is uh, something I looked at, but it was only a concept. It was only to show uh, if we don't have bytecode, but uh, have compilation, what can we gain? It's not really worth it. So I think this sort of speed up is um, unimportant. So what we got new is um, this code generation is now starting uh, to remove code that is not used and it's using traces to determine um, if uh, objects need releases and as we will see later, exceptions are now fast. I have a slide about this. So constant propagation, which is basically just peephole optimization. So 
identify as many values and push it forward. So if you assign a constant into a variable and use that later on, you generate uh, efficient code. I have just recently uh, achieved that. What I haven't got yet, and which will be an important part to getting any actual improvement that is worthwhile for anybody, is uh, to make type inference and treat strings, integers, lists, and so on uh, differently. That's only starting to exist. Then interfacing with C code, the so-called bindings. I had a discussion with, um, with uh, a Cypen guy this morning. Uh, Nutka will and should be able to understand C types and CFFI and make direct calls. I have a slide about that too and hints, type hints, doesn't exist. So not this year, uh, type hints and uh, so on. So I have here a outside view of uh, Nutka, where you can see that on, on the top left you have your code, then you put that for your Nutka, can be multiple files, so Nutka recurses according to your Python path and just finds your code and produces from that a bunch of C++ files and puts it in a directory and then it runs scones. And what typically happens is that people tell me for some reasons that I do not really understand that scones is somehow bad. I don't think it is, it does the job and I have a scones file in Utka which then can be used to produce a module so if you were to deliver an extension module from your Python code, that's feasible, even whole packages, or you can produce an executable. So from a user standpoint, Nutker and your code, that is basically it. Um, Scons does handle the C++ details, and I get very um, uh, nice emails from people who said, it even found my, uh, my Microsoft compiler and just works. Uh, it's very easy to use, so I have a very, low barrier of entry. When we look inside, you will find that uh, I have a couple of faces. So based on the um, abstract syntax tree, the same one that Python uses. So in a sense, I'm reusing the Python parser, which is one of the benefits of not having a separate language. I enter a step called reformulations so for example, in Python 2.6, the with statement got added, and it's, well, I could have a with node and generate code from that, and actually, first versions of Nutka did that. So I had a C++ template, and I generated code, which just happened to do the proper thing, the compatible thing, but that's not how it's done anymore. We now have reformulations, and with these reformulations, the with statement, ends up uh, simpler Python. We are going to see a few examples of that. So I'm speaking very fast and I try to be fast. The idea is also that you can have your questions asked. So if you have a question, just raise your hand and ask questions whenever you think you uh, have one, please do so. Um, then we go into optimization, which is basically an endless loop because optimizing a Python program you cannot have a single or two pass approach because after every optimization, any other optimization may become feasible again. So it's an endless loop, but it finishes at some point and then finalization is entered, which just annotates the code a bit more. Uh, this then final tree receives a code generation and then the directory we were seeing. So that's very um, typical. What's probably special is that there is this reformulation step um, which tries to make a baby Python out of things. So, time for demo. Um, this is a Python function and uh, it has a nested function and it does local variable assignments and then it makes uh, this uh, call, which can be inlined. And actually, uh, you and I, as a human, we can, um, we can see what happens. And the thing which I'm very proud of is that I now have variable tracing and SSH uh, sufficiently strong. 
uh, to justify that on a global scale, uh, Nutka will be able to understand that sort of code and produce a, a uh, simpler result. So it has a verbose mode and here we see uh, a look into the inside uh, what happens there um, when uh, it runs. So there are tried blocks, which is sort of true uh, because of a reformulation. For example, uh, this statement here does an unpacking and uh, secretly uh, that involves uh, try finally semantics. So if you get interrupted while unpacking, you get to release some things. So. But the static analysis finds out that the tried blocks can be reduced. It finds out uh, that the assignment to G can be propagated entirely and therefore be dropped, the one to X, the one to Y. The value is then actually propagated and then in line nine here we have a constant tuple, constant result. We can replace the call to G with a direct call and we can inline the function. We can discover that previously there was a variable G but it now is no longer used and it, so it's not assigned and then it's not in, uh, initialized anymore. So uh, this uninitial, uh, uninitialized variable G, it can be, well, the releasing of it. Uh, should there have been an exception in a Python function, your locals get released. That's uh, what's behind this. And then we propagate the inline variables and a variable, build a tuple and so on, remove all the try handlers and ultimately we are done with that. So, for example, this is a even simpler program, but it will help me to make a better demonstration. Uh, it's better in the sense that uh, right now, the unpacking, I don't, I started to have analysis years ago for that, but it's not um, yet sufficient, so I cannot have tuple unpacking and uh, show a full reduction. So when we run this, as you can see, outputs and a lot of findings. And now for easier debugging, I have invented a XML representation of the node tree and I use this to test that something is entirely optimized. And as you can see here, we have a statement return that is just a constant 2-2. Two, two. So this function f, all it does is a lot of churn around the notion of producing one constant. Obviously your code is not going to be like this, but uh, it could be if, for example, the x were an input value of some sort and then uh, if this was already a partially optimized function uh, for some reason, then these things make uh, sense. So um, we got this, any questions about this? The question was, is it storing the reduced Python code anywhere? Actually, that's a cool idea for a project that I have, is to generate Python code from the reduced uh, one. Right now, I only generate C. I would love for somebody to take the internal representation of the optimization and generate Python code from that. Python code, well, it's just faster than the other Python code. But um, since we are making a Python compiler for a reason, I'm going to C directly, and in C uh, I'm outputting this, but uh, basically, technically, um, the internal final representation is not entirely Python anymore. So as we will see in the reformulation part, um, for example, while loops and for loops, they don't exist, so it is a reduced set, but it would be, for example, feasible 
to create Python code out of that. So um, maybe quickly here. Oop. I uh, no, don't do this because I made XML. And because I'm easily confused, I removed the code that is not used. And I had opened it already, but here we go again. So this is what the generated code, for example, looks like. So we have a local uh, variable, return value, initialize it to nothing. Then we initialize it to the result which is a pre-made constant. And we go to the function return exit, which checks that it's actually a return value and then it returns it. So this is, has become, uh, in Python world, the most efficient, um, the most efficient um, f code that you can have. Obviously, uh, there's more to it. So we can also do a mercurial. This is something uh, that uh, worked two years ago. It's passing the test suite with Mercurial, so we could compile this now. And actually, I was doing it. It took uh, 13, uh, 35 minutes to compile all of Mercurial, which is a huge body of, of, um, of code. Right now, Nutka is not making enough optimizations and discovering enough dead code, um, but half an hour is pretty okay on this laptop uh, without power. So, generated code works like this. I will be quick. So now it's C code. When I initially started out, I, I was aware that this is a very ambitious project. So the only reason I dared even start it was because C++ 11, the new C++ language was having so much cool new features that convinced me that code generation would be relatively simple now. So the gap between C++ 11 and Python was relatively small. It turns out uh, that, for example, C++ exceptions suck and in-place operations of Python are optimizable, but that doesn't fit into one object, only one thing. So I went to C++ 03 and then to C-ish, C++, which is basically just C with some C++ elements, but no class, no types. And it's going to be C99 soon enough. So I'm going to skip something. So as an evolution, three years ago, I'm talking now about the um, C++ 11 one, the blue part, that was the code generation. So I had achieved something phenomenal, and that was a compiler, which, um, was capable of integrating with all that Python landscape and make things faster, which was tremendous. But the other parts, they are so small you can barely see them. Um, parser optimization, there was basically only loophole, peephole optimization three years ago. Two years ago, I went to C++03 and the code generation got a lot more dump and reformulation um, started to appear and optimization become bigger. And right now, code generation has become really stupid and uh, optimization is carrying the day. So now, um, these reformulations, I'm making some overhead there using temporary variables and so on. I can now optimize them away. So availability, I have um, a high focus on correctness. So um, it's available uh, in a stable and a developed form. The developed form is also um, better than other stable projects I contend, and I have a factory uh, where I publish things that are not finished yet. For example, the inlining code is right now on a factory branch. There's not just Git, there's RPMs and so on. Lots of people are already using Nutka. This is my most important slide, so I want you to join the project. Help me, I will... Um, guide you and one thing I have to cover for correctness you see the oracle of Delphi Delphi means uh, I can use C Python and compare with Python so testing for correctness it's it's a dream it's very easy for performance 
it's much harder. It's a race and I have ideas and what I would like you to do is to help me come up and develop with a tool that will help us uh, um, give a user feedback for performance. Because if you now compile your code, it may not be faster at all. It may even be slower and we wouldn't know why. There's no feedback, uh, there's no idea which function is slower or faster and how much. Uh, there, there needs to be a tool. I need somebody with an interest um, to help me out with this and rescue us. So this is the most important things I meant to say. I would leave the rest of the time, I hope it's still 10 minutes, <laughs> um, for questions if you have them. Uh, yeah, okay, in my opinion, which uh, Python language constructs were, were making code generation the hardest? And then I, um, I think technically, um, once we are able to inline meta classes and their effects, I think they will uh, not be an issue and they are very, very easy. Technically, classes and instances need a lot of babysitting, uh, especially under Python 2 to be correct. So that's, uh, that was an issue and I had a huge amount of difficulties with in-place operation and exceptions and especially exceptions. Exceptions are totally a nightmare. So I waste and yeah, reference counting is no fun, <laughs> which is why I develop a compiler too. So you do not have to write C code ever again. Yeah, so next question. For what? Uh, the default type to me right now is object. And so the question was how to handle it if something doesn't have a type. Uh, right now, Nutker is basically using no type information at all yet. Um, what it will do, and let me show you this. Uh, in the future, it will be able to understand, for example, C types and they make direct calls. But right now, everything is an object, be it a list, string, integer. I'm barely, on, uh, not, I'm not using uh, the knowledge yet. I will start to make, now that I have this uh, tracing capability, I can produce proper traces of Python. I will be able to trace the lists and make optimizations dedicated to types, but I don't have it yet. But what's the level of C uh, I'm integrating with libpython and it's pi object asterisk. It's, it's a standard Python object. It's, it's like you wrote a C extension code. Another question? Yes? So did you try you know, a compiler for I tried uh, various compilers. Um, obviously on the C level there's still always something to gain and I'm trying to be clever and smart about code I generate and I find the Microsoft compiler to be uh, terrible and intro will probably be better. Um, but technically, Nutka should be in a position to understand Python. So if the, the example that I showed you, it gains by an order of magnitude performance by just inlining a function call. I, I, I don't have a slide, uh, time to show the slide now, but if, I'm, if I just avoid a function call of Python, I, I can have speed ups in the domain of 20 fold. And, and, uh, and so on. And maybe on top of that, with a C compiler, you can add a few percent again. Yes, Thomas. Well, some feedback. Uh, I just uh, ran bot backup through Nutka and it worked. Yeah, that's also, there was a PyCon talk in uh, 2014 and uh, the presenter always also said it just works. I throw things at it. Um, what you just tried is also something called, it's a standalone mode. I'm not mentioning that because I'm not interested in it, but it means um, it will also pack all the things together and allow your distribution to other machines. Something people also expect from a compiler is to be able to take the code to another machine. Uh, my interest is mostly in acceleration and I'm solving this as a sidekick. Yeah, so, but uh, the feedback is it just works. And uh, when I'm, uh, it's at the point where I'm surprised if something 
doesn't work for standalone. I'm not surprised if something doesn't work because it's very hairy with extension modules often. Yes. Yes, the bytecode is incredibly smaller. It definitely, you, it's, uh, there's no need to talk about it. A, a binary which contains the Python uh, implementation and uses it, it's, it's larger. But I don't think it's, it's anywhere near um, important issue. And um, obviously, you will be much faster the smaller you are. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's larger, but it's still small binaries. So if we can have a look at HGX, it's what, 31 megabytes, I think. Uh, yes, to confuse users. <laughs> That's a very important part of my project. Um, so suppose the program you compile is named HG. What is going to be the resulting name without overwriting it? I want to put it alongside and I've made good experience with .exe. It's relatively rare that a Python program exists as .exe. So, but uh, I'm getting questions and please take note, this one will run on Linux despite its name. And you can rename it, it will still work. So if you despise the name, yeah. Yes, you or you aren't? I, I think I'm using uh, stack memory allocation, yes. Uh, and I will definitely, uh, if what I will need is some sort of list implementation that is not uh, malloc driven. If I know the size and uh, if, if I know enough uh, sufficient things, I will use uh, stack memory, yes. Try to be faster. The question is, if, if I take advantage of ref counting, uh, I, 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 I try to do this. So I'm not always taking a ref count when P C Python does, but it's a very marginal gain. The real direction must be to avoid Python objects wherever we can, and we, we will see how far this gets. But of course, where I can, I, I will have this analysis and know that I don't have to take another ref count because I will be holding one already. Yes, Thomas. Okay. Um, I've seen it bundles quite some libraries I don't really use. Is there a way to get rid of them? No, there is no. Uh, he's asking about standalone and the standalone distributions, if you want to copy it to another machine, basically in, in, due to the um, incompleteness of Code removal in includes a standard library and all the libraries that standard library uses. And so you end up with a larger set. So the distribution, I don't think it's huge, but it's, uh, it's like a Python installation, I suppose. So, yes? Do you have any real-world uh, benchmarks? I don't have real-world benchmarks because that defies the purpose of benchmarks. I know that PyPy is really cool now with presenting uh, um, real-world programs and how PyPy stacks up to this. Um, I, I, uh, I have this idea about Valgrind. All my benchmarking I'm doing with Valgrind. And Valgrind gives me ticks so I don't have to run m many times and I can make analysis uh, directly. And I would want your help, or I will do it myself, but I want your help to create a tool which will uh, run the program in Python and run the program in Nutka and compare the two and make a highlighting of what parts are fast and slow. And so I can uh, get, uh, and you as a user can get an image, how much speed up do I get in my program? And then um, uh, it should be uh, simple enough to just run your program under, uh, under another tool and get a report. So uh, it's all laudable to have these um, benchmarks uh, with synthetic, um, uh, cool, but I would actually like to empower us, um, me and the developers of Nutker and the users, 
I don't know if we can make this tool and the sad truth is right now there's nothing. Basically I just have random number, numbers of something and uh, I'm working very hard on getting to somewhere but like I said I have a time and I don't have a panic to be fast in everything tomorrow and um, right now I am only starting to wonder about actual performance so this is now uh, where I want to know how good I am. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and for the good questions.